things there are two things we need to know to figure out how wide this nebula is right we, if we want to know physically how large is this then we need to know how wide it appears to be so imagine pointing at the left edge pointing at the right edge that's an angle right so you've got your your left hand pointing off over here you've got your right hand pointing off over here your two arms are making an angle so so that's how big it appears to be and we also need to know how far away it is we run into this all the time in our day-to-day -day lives uh, think about a bus right a bus is really big but if it is far away it will appear small so physically it has a large physical size but if its distance is large its angle will be small. It will look small. Imagine pointing at the left edge of the bus, the right edge of the bus, it will be small. Uh, or a bee is very tiny, but if it has landed on your nose, it can look huge. So an object size and its distance affect how large it appears to us. So if we can measure how large it appears to us and we can know its distance, we can figure out its size. So how can we measure how wide the nebula appears to be? Fortunately, JS9 has a built-in tool to do this, though it requires a little bit of work to use. Uh, step one, we need to tell JS9 to be ready to give us some numbers. So for this, we activate the analysis region stats tool. So I'll move that down into view here. Okay, and uh, step two, we need to tell it what type of region we want numbers for. So we want a line. Notice how when I clicked on line, it made a line down here. Now we need to get our line set up so that it is stretching from edge to edge of whatever we want to measure. So in my case, let's say that I'm gonna call this my estimate of the left edge of the nebula and this over here is my estimate of the right edge of the nebula. I just click and drag to stretch it across. I could measure other features if I wanted to. Maybe I, I might decide to measure its height, right? I might decide that I'm really only interested in this kind of dark patch in the middle. So maybe I'll go and measure that. But in our case, you know, so for our training assignment here, we're going to be measuring the width of the nebula. So click and drag so that the line stretches across the whole thing. And so notice as I'm clicking and dragging and moving it around, there are all of these numbers that are changing. But out of all of those numbers, we really only care about one of them, the box width. This number box width is telling us how long our line is. So in my particular case, I've set it up so I'm, I'm measuring from here to here, and that is a length of 490. 490 what? Ah, I've got a number here, but is that number the angle? What are the units on this number? Uh, this is not telling us the angle, unfortunately. It is telling us how many pixels wide that line is. So it's telling us pixel, a number of pixels, not an angle. What do we mean by pixels? Well, pixels refers to sort of the way that the camera works. It's actually a bunch of little squares collecting light. And if I really zoom in, you can see the pixelation of the image. So it looks like a bunch of little squares. You can tell I uh, was in a hurry and did not align uh, my images. Notice how my uh, my my green is here, my blue is here, my red is here. So, but the, the, the point is that the detector itself is made of a bunch of little boxes collecting light. And so we need to know how wide each of those little boxes is. Fortunately, that is built into the tool as well. We, we can look up the width of each pixel. Uh, we go to image, display fits header, and we need to scroll and scroll until we find M scale. 
So we're look. So this the image header is packed with information about this image. Anything that you might need to make use of this data. But what we need right now is M scale. This is telling us that this particular camera, um, the pixels cover an angle of 5.18 arc seconds. So 5.18 arc seconds. Remember, remember that one arc second, that's about the width of a human hair halfway across a football field. So these are incredibly tiny details much, much smaller than what can be seen with the human eye. So we now have all the information we need to figure out just how large this nebula is. We know how many pixels wide it is for the points I picked, 490 pixels, and we know how wide each pixel is, 5.18. We just need to multiply those numbers together. So 5.18. So that's how wide each pixel is, and I'm going to multiply that by how many pixels I have, 490. So my particular measurement of the width of the nebula is 2,538 arc seconds. Your number will be a little different because you might pick some you know, different features to say, this is the width that I want to talk about. And that's okay, as long as you are then clear in explaining you know, in showing that this is the part of the nebula that I'm talking about. Going back to our original question, just how wide is this thing? I provide in the instructions the calculation to do that. And for that, you, we also need to know the distance, which I give you in the instructions, and there's a uh, conversion term that's needed to make all of the units work out.